This is the most interesting take I've ever heard from a non-Muslim about the Quran. So earlier today I made a video saying how impressed I was with Palestinian faith because it just seems that Palestinians have this ironclad faith even in the face of losing quite literally everything and people were commenting underneath saying well yeah girl that's Islam have you read the Quran you should probably read the Quran and I have time and I was also curious as to what how how even in at uh, facing genocide is Palestinian faith so strong and so I decided to go on script to see if there was an audiobook version of the Quran there is and so I started listening so if there is one thing that I would consider to be positive about the situation in Palestine and there aren't many there isn't any to be honest but if you forced me at gunpoint to find some kind of silver lining in there I would say that more people are learning not only about the Palestinian cause but about Islam Muslims reading the Quran and so on straight off the bat what I'm a fan of <laughs> There is no introduction. I even thought that I I accidentally skipped over something because it gets straight to it. Like there is no once upon a time. <laughs> there is no in the beginning. There is none of that. It was like, all right, if you do this, then this happens. If you do this, like it gets straight into it. And by the way, if you are Muslim, I hope I'm not being disrespectful. This is just my experience in reading the Quran for the first time. Not disrespectful at all. On the contrary, this is actually very interesting because one of the miracles of the Quran is that it's very eloquent to the point that it challenges people, it's in the Quran, to write something, anything close to it. So it can't have words that are expendable, it can't waste time, it's very special in that way to the point that literally no human being can write even one verse that's exactly like the Quran. I'm on, I'm on like chapter 4 of like 117, but I found some things very interesting. Like, first it said, oppression is worse than murder. And I was like, that's a word. When the early Muslims were asked what's the main point of Islam or can you summarize Islam in a few words, they said it's to free people from worshiping other people and from despotism and make them all worship only one God. So when people say that Islam is an oppressive religion, I innocently know that they know nothing about Islam. And then it was saying... Um, it was talking about divorce, and I didn't know divorce was allowed. Divorce is allowed in the Islamic religion or Islam religion. Now we are getting into the interesting stuff because I think it's unrealistic to ask people to never get divorced under any circumstances. That's why people in the West have rejected that. They're getting divorced all the time or they are cheating on their husbands and wives. It doesn't make sense to force people to stay in marriages that aren't working anymore. And Islam is very realistic in its acknowledgement of the human nature. It's still frowned upon and discouraged in Islam to get divorced. You shouldn't get divorced. You should try to preserve your marriage. But but if you hit a roadblock, there is a way out. And it was saying how if you're a woman and you get divorced, you have to wait three periods. I don't know how long a period is. A month. Thank you very much. Let's continue. But you have to wait three periods and then you're okay to remarry, girl. Like, go find your husband. And it was saying if you're a dude and you divorce your wife and you haven't touched her yet, but you promised her a dowry, you still got to pay half that. I was like, feminism! Again, that's very interesting to hear from a non-Muslim woman because the majority of people converting to Islam every year are actually women and that comes as a surprise for many people because the narrative is that Islam oppresses women, which is crazy for anyone who knows Islam, actually. Islam values women very highly. If you're a man, there is no way to manipulate women in Islam or take advantage of them. You start by marriage and you take care of your woman for the rest of your life. You provide for her, you protect her, and women are considered to be jewels and a very precious thing but you can't say that islam is a feminist religion by today's standards of feminism but again today you can sell your body online for cash and people will tell you that this is empowerment obviously islam doesn't approve of that and then there was um a part in there that i was surprised about i don't know why i thought it was going to be like the christian religion where um if somebody slaps you you got to offer your other cheek and everything because that always bothered me like i'm like if I, if somebody slaps me i should be able to slap them back in the quran it says if somebody fights you you fight them back you like if whatever they do to you you do to them and i was like absolutely 
Exactly. <laughs> common sense. Islam is the common sense religion. Christians were told to turn the other cheek and they threw the entire book aside and went on pillaging the earth through the crusades and other wars till this very day. And to bring it back full circle, that's what the Palestinians are doing. They are not turning the other cheek and that's what pisses off a lot of people in the West. Okay, I have to talk fast, but this is part two. And I apologize. In, a, in the previous video, somebody commented that I was pronouncing Islam and Muslim wrong because I was using a Z sound instead of a, so a soft S. And I don't know what a soft S is compared to a hard S. I imagine a hard S is like S. So they said use a soft one. So Islam and Muslim. So I'm sorry. I like how respectful she is, but I want to say something to Muslims who might be listening to this. Don't get hung up on these minutia. Like, who cares if someone can't pronounce an Arabic word perfectly, right? As long as you know that this person doesn't mean to mock Muslims because some Islamophobes say Muslims and Islam as a way to, you know, make fun of Islam and Muslims. But as long as the person doesn't mean that, it's okay. But diving right in, in terms of women... Because I was on I was on chapters four and five and it talks in terms of marriage and technically how like Muslim men, Muslim men can have two, three, four wives. But you have to be able to afford it like you have to be able to provide for each wife, uh, clothe each wife. And it even says if you feel you will not be fair, then you only need to be taking one wife or keeping what you have. Basically, if you cannot if you are not up for the task of being a provider in marriage, then you don't need to be married, which I was like, oh, come through with the tea. To understand the polygamy thing in Islam, you have to understand that the average number of sexual partners for one person in the West is like seven or something like that. It's very high in comparison to the Muslim world where people get married usually to one person and they stay with them forever, as opposed to the West where people get married to one person and they still cheat or they get involved with a number of people and then they settle down with one. In Islam, sexual relationships are very organized. A man can marry more than one woman, but they have to provide for them, protect them. A woman is not required to do anything from the moment she's birth to the, to the moment of her death. She's not required to work. She's not required to provide for herself. She's completely taken care of by her family, then her husband. And if there is no husband and there is no family, then the uncle or the family and then the state like it's very organized and women are very protected in that way and if you're a man who wants to get involved with more than one woman then you get married you pay a dowry and you take care of this woman for the rest of her life and if you can't do that then you don't get to have more than one wife and sexual relationships outside of marriage is not a thing in islam and it's almost not a thing in the muslim world and then there was something else that i really really liked it says if you dislike meaning like your wife if you dislike them, it may be that you dislike something in which God has placed much good. Meaning, if you marry a woman and you dislike that woman, but God blessed you with that woman as, as someone good in your life, as a blessing in your life. So if you dislike that woman, you dislike God's blessing, which makes you a I like that part. Because Islam doesn't place a man's desire above everything. It's not important, it's, or, or at least not the most important thing in Islam for a man to have the perfect wife and be attracted to her at all times. No, you're building something with this woman. If there's something that you don't like about her, it says in the Quran, then you will find other things that you would like about her. You don't get to just leave her or divorce her or act on a whim. Yeah, God blessed you with this wife. God gave you this woman and you have to find a way to live happily with her anyway there's a lot and obviously she received hit because it's the internet and it's tiktok but she responded perfectly let me tell y'all something the majority of the responses i've received on previous videos where i'm just sharing what i've enjoyed so far about reading the quran have been overwhelmingly positive and loving and welcoming but some responses I've received are just so hateful and weird from, from non-Muslim people telling me that I should not be spreading Islam, that it's harmful, that it's a dangerous religion, etc., etc., etc. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I am not spreading anything. I am learning about a religion that over two billion people in this world practice 
I am learning about my fellow human beings. And there is nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, I would encourage you to open your mind just a little bit and try to do the same. You do not have to be Muslim. You do not have to convert. You do not have to do any of that in order to want to understand and become closer to your fellow human beings. If you want to learn about Islam, a link in the description, sources through which you can read the Quran, listen to the Quran, learn more about Islam, and that's it. See you later. And please subscribe to that channel. Thank you.